People fret a lot about coffee grinders, and while it's true that different burrs and grinding speeds and feed rates and other factors can yield subtle differences on the palate, it's easy to worry too much. Any well-designed, well-made grinder will let you make good coffee. Grinding is by no means all there is to it, but it's a major factor. A good grinder is necessary, but not sufficient. So let's try to reduce our anxiety when it comes to making little pieces out of big pieces of coffee. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. Your only real problem is when a grinder doesn't suit the way you make coffee. There are better and worse choices depending on the method you prefer. But unfortunately, that matchup between machine and method doesn't break cleanly into simple categories like flat burrs versus conicals. That's not really how it works. For example, here on the left is a flat pair designed for brewing. And over here on the right is a flat pair designed for espresso. They're the same size and the same basic type, and at a glance they look identical. They're not identical, by the way, and you can learn more in my Niche Duo Teardown and Review video. These two grinders have conical burrs that favor espresso, but neither would be my first choice for brewing. These two flat burr grinders also favor espresso over brewing. So these four all make a tasty cup of espresso, but if you were to experiment with a single sample of beans and dial in carefully until all of the shot parameters are the same, you would find that there are subtle differences in flavor. You would also find that none of them makes a bad cup of coffee. Now, this flat burr unit is a competent all-around grinder. And this flat burr machine is too, but that doesn't mean that conical burr grinders can't also work just as well. This one is quite good for all-around use. So you don't want to think flat or conical if you make espresso mostly or brew mostly or both. It really is a matter of the complete design of the device, not the basic category of burr. What would be a bad grinder? I haven't got one to show you, but not a blade grinder, as the Cliff's Notes to Coffee Perfection would tell you. The worst kind would be a poor quality burr grinder. Why? Because it has fixed capabilities which are set to a low bar. It can suck, and there's little you can do about it. However, a very competent burr grinder can be had for as little as 150 euros, dollars, pounds, whatever. It will almost certainly be a hand grinder, and very likely with conical burrs. Every dollar you put into an electric motor and automatic controls and push-button convenience is going to come out of the build quality and performance. So if you're looking for an inexpensive but capable unit, a quality hand grinder is the way to go. Whatever you're shopping for, the manufacturer should state which end of the scale a particular grinder is aimed at, espresso or brewing, or if it's an all-around design. Some will have optional burr sets. The Baratza Vario Plus and the Niche Duo let you choose. Very few grinders are truly universal. The Fiorenzato All Ground and the Eureka Baby come close and the EK43 comes even closer, but its flat burrs are of a unique design and they function differently from other flat burrs. Check out part two of my EK restoration for more about that if you're curious. Espresso and Turkish coffee can be impossible with a burr grinder that's poorly aligned. Why? Because that means the burrs will come together at an angle and touch at only one point. You can't get them any closer than touching, and if the angle is bad enough, the gap opposite will be so wide that you simply can't grind fine enough. If this defect is substantial, you should fix it. It's not difficult. I have a video on that. But a small misalignment is of no consequence. You see, if the burrs are movable and adjustable, there has to be play, which means they will be deflected by the forces of grinding there will always be some chatter, regardless of what the ink test seems to say. 
During the ink test, there's no load, so it's not realistic. One last possible source of grinder anxiety is wondering how long it takes for a new pair of burrs to season in. And when somebody uses that phrase, season in, which implies a sort of settling or bedding process, like with a building's foundation or my dentures, I know that they've got no clue what seasoning is. There is nothing going on that the preposition in could ever aptly follow. Seasoning is relevant chiefly to very precise grinding times where the flow of particles through the chamber can be affected slightly. Think of seasoning as a final buffing or stropping of the surfaces that the coffee particles encounter as they flow. You can see how the correct grind time might gradually decrease for a brief period. In a cafe, you worry about minor inconsistencies like that. At home, you don't. Particle characteristics are barely affected, if at all. Unavoidable inconsistencies, that is, those baked-in margins of error shot to shot, have got a much greater effect on flavor. So forget about seasoning. It's just another major forum topic that no home user ever needed to worry about. So long as you don't have a tragic mismatch between your grinder type and your method, you'll be able to make good coffee. And now I'm going to push that claim to the limit to show you just how resilient this process is. Let's make some espresso. These are old, cheap commercial beans which I use for rough dialing in. You can see some oil on the surface, and the silver skin is no longer a different color, so this is a dark roast, certainly well into second crack. It's not what I like to drink, but it's cheap, and I don't feel guilty about discarding it. I'm going to use a blade grinder. Yeah, you heard me. You want to explore the limits, right? I've heard this is impossible. Well, that sounds like a challenge to me. This was not rehearsed. At the time of filming, I had no idea what might happen. I had the idea and decided to record it. Of course, voiceover me knows the story, but coffee making me did not. Here's my setup. I'll grind three portions at once, 48 grams or 16 grams per shot. That's going to be my starting point. With a blade grinder, you adjust the grit size by timing. To reduce your reaction time error, start your timer, then start the grinder at 5 seconds, then subtract 5 from your total. The beans will behave like a fluid running away from the blades, so you need to interrupt the flow manually, which I'm doing with this counter rotation. Most fancy grinders have clump breakers, but here you've got to do that manually. Yes, I was giving it a fair shot. going to just dump and shake as usual. I'm not even bothering with the funnel. No fancy prep rituals here. This coffee feels kind of clumpy, so I'm going to tamp very lightly to start. Now I have to reset the camera and lights. Back in a minute. All right, let's see what happens. Well, this is way too fast, but a thousand dollar grinder would do this too on a first go. So this doesn't tell us anything except I need to make some adjustments. I saw a tiny moment of channeling that healed itself as channeling does. So that was 30 grams in 20 seconds and the coffee tasted thin, sour, under extracted. It didn't taste foul, mind. It just needs work. Okay, second shot. Same routine as before, only with a little heavier tamping. Not changing anything else.
again, looks decent. Still running too fast. I think that was 30 out in 25 seconds. And still too sour. But it's not a catastrophe. Some actual decent flavor is starting to appear. This is the last shot from the initial batch. Slightly heavier tamping still, but not very heavy. And again, it looks okay. Running a bit fast out of the gate. No channeling, but some slightly under-involved areas toward the rear. That's 30 grams in about 30 seconds, and the flavor is noticeably improved, but still not good enough. It does show some sweetness this time, but still a bit too sour. I'd call it under-extracted. The shower is clean, the puck looks all right, some big particles there, but nothing crazy. So I'd call it mechanically decent, but not completely sound. Now I'll take what I learned in round one and use better coffee, which will make this more of a challenge. Medium roast, high grown, channel washed Kenyan. It's very dense, so it needs to be cooked properly. It might appear dark on the screen, but you can see from the contrast between the bean surface and the silver skin, and the lack of any visible oil, that I took it off the roast before the start of second crack. I know there are people who will see this as charcoal, but they probably have very chalky water. Still, the cult of the undercooked bean is a force out there in barista land. We pay it no mind. I'm a chef. Cooking is what I do. These beans are cooked perfectly. This will be harder to extract than the first sample, so I'll grind four seconds longer and bump my water temperature up from 93 to 95 degrees. And because this is denser, the dose will be 17 and a half grams to get the correct volume, as opposed to 16 grams previously. So 52 and a half grams total. Again, the ground coffee feels kind of clumpy, but I'll tamp a bit more firmly than before despite that. Otherwise, with these harder particles, this will run fast. I'm just showing the shots. The prep routine is exactly the same as before. This coffee is extremely fresh, roasted two days ago, so the mousse is going to be copious but fake. More like beer foam than the emulsified layer of caffeinated mayonnaise that we all love. Anyone who says anything about blonding in the comments is going to get banned. Mechanically speaking, this is a lot better than I thought possible with a blade grinder. Shot one is too sour by a mile, so a bit more tamp pressure and let's go again. I changed the coffee because I don't want to hear from people complaining that this test is too easy. So now, no dark roast and no soft Brazilian naturals. Well, that sounded all kinds of wrong. I don't do light roasts. My water has absurdly low residual alkalinity. Hard, high-grown coffee like this is always a challenge in terms of flavor balance. This shot read a little longer than the first, but it's too sour as well. Third time's a charm, right? Firmer tamp again. I'm going for a longer shot time. And this does look like a decent shot. Best looking one so far. The mousse is insane, but again, very fresh beans. And the flavor is, you guessed it, too sour. With that softer commercial dark roast, I was able to get a promising result after two tries, but not here. This has strength and richness. It's concentrated, but the flavor balance is off. My sense is that I could grind finer and tamp heavier, but I'm not going to conquer the sourness with my water. I think we've reached the limit of what this little device is capable of. I'd need a better grinder to fix this. 
So really, almost any type of grinder can work. The rule of thumb is simple. If your coffee tastes good and your shots are mechanically sound, you don't need to worry. Lighten up, relax, and enjoy. If it tastes good, it is good. Well, that's about all for today. Coming up, I've got a hand grinder with flat burrs to show you, and I have some footage to share from my recent trip to Belfast. I'll also post an announcement disclosing some industry consulting work I'm doing. Don't worry, there's no conflict of interest. I've been very careful about that, but I like to be open about everything. Because my coffee videos tend to be very time-consuming, I've begun adding extra, varied content to fill the gaps and keep the place a bit livelier. I've still got plenty to say about Europe, Ireland, Israel, and Gaza. I won't mix content. That is, a coffee video will always be coffee only. Politics will be just politics. So, if something doesn't suit you, don't click. And if that's not good enough, let me extend a special invitation. Cheers!